what's going on? This is Thomas Gal Denzi with Combat Sports Coverage. And on this edition, I'll be interviewing UFC vet Josh, the People's Warrior Berkman, over his upcoming LFA 66 fight May 10th, where he'll be taking on another UFC vet, William Macareo. So Berkman, tell me how your training camp is going so far, about two weeks out from this LFA co-main event fight. Yeah, the training camp is good, you know. Uh, it's interesting. I thought I was going to retire, you know. Um, I got neck surgery uh, last February over a year ago, and, you know, I felt like I was pretty much done. I had a good career. I had no regrets, and I was okay walking away, you know. And then LFA was coming to town, and they hit me up, and I think it was about six weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, I had been I had been training, teaching a lot, you know, and uh, – Staying in shape, trying to be in the best shape of my life, you know, with this Budokan stuff that I'm doing, which is a mixture of yoga, mobility, martial arts. And I just want to be a, I want to be a really good mover as I age, you know. And then when the fight came up, I was just, I was like, yeah, I want to fight. And so I started picking up my training a little bit, nothing too crazy, started sparring. And, you know, I was, I was in really good shape. And uh, the closer the fight gets, I started to really tie up my diet and, you know, I, I started running when I knew I was going to fight, you know, and at first my runs were 30, 35, 36 minutes. I've got them down to 25 minutes. You know, I've improved a lot. And, and you know, I'm not I'm not training like I used to train where I'm physically just pushing and pushing and pushing it all the time. But I'm just I'm very aware of the details and the awareness of what I'm doing. And, you know, in a couple of my rounds, I was like, man, like I might be as good as I've ever been. You know, and, and, and I'm really excited about it. Training camp's been cool, and it's really fun to have, you know, a fight to train for and, and just be able to really sit back and enjoy this and not try to be, oh, I'm going to be the best in the world. Oh, I'm going to, you know, do this and just really just get ready for a fight and show what I can do. So it's been it's been a really, really cool experience, especially at 39 years old, 17 years into my career. This is one of the most enjoyable training camps I've ever had. And speaking of that injury, uh, uh, how is the neck feeling during training camp? It feels perfect and everything, no problems? Yeah, I I don't know that perfect ever is going to happen for me again necessarily. You know, I also played 15 years of football. I played college football, and that's when I very first started having neck problems. So I've had them for a long time, you know. Um, But with what I'm – where I'm at now and what I was the last couple years of my career – it's 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 a crazy difference and it's it's you know the surgery is holding up real well um i feel i feel strong you know last last six months last year of my ufc career you know i was waking up with headaches i was numb in my arm no headaches no numbness in the arm i feel i feel really good you know and and i'm i'm really i'm really impressed and surprised at just how how my body is is handling this training camp i i didn't expect this that's great. Yeah, I I could not imagine having um, some some uh, neck surgery or anything like that. Does not sound like a good time. But it's awesome to hear that your training camp is going great so far, and that you seem to be training uh, differently but smarter. Maybe as we would say, maybe. And then how, where are you training out of for this uh, for this camp? So I'm in Utah, you know, and uh, I had a couple offers to go train a couple other places, and I just wanted to stay home. You know, I'm a dad. I got a six year old and a four year old, as you saw, <laughs> Atlas jumping on me before we started this. And I just want to be home with my kids. I want I want this experience to really be about my 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 kids, my te- my the, the, the students that I'm coaching, my community. You know, Utah's really showed up, and 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 um, they're excited that I'm that I'm fighting here again. And ticket sales are really good, and um, so I just I stayed at home. I train at Ultimate Combat Training Center, which is where I teach at, and then uh, we got also. Uh, the Pit Salt Lake City is here, Ramsey and Isham's gym. Oh, nice. So I've been in, in sparred with uh, those guys a few times. And, you know, I'm just kind of training with a little bit of everybody, you know, picking it up as I go. And, and I got some good friends and some good training partners are making sure that they're doing what they can to help me get ready also. And how exciting is it for you that you will be fighting basically at, at home? It's awesome. You know, I mean – I really loved the UFC. I, I enjoyed the time, but there's nothing like fighting at home in front of friends and family, sleeping in your own bed. You know, there, there's a cool part about having to travel, and there's a really cool part about having to just be home, and, and I have everything that I need, and I know where everything's at, and it's uh, it's 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 enjoyable. Like I said, this is 
one of the best experiences I've ever had uh, getting ready for a fight in, in my 17 year career. That's awesome. It's, it sounds very exciting. Uh, I bet you'll have a lot of your uh, students and supporters out there watching you to cheer you on, which is always great. And how do you see this fight playing out with your opponent, who is also a UFC vet with a 9-4 uh, and four record with six of his wins coming by TKO knockout? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, William, I, I think it's Macario, is, uh, he's, a, he's a good opponent. He's a, he's, a, he's a very, he's a tough guy, you know, made the finale of the Ultimate Fighter. Like I said, he, he wins by TKO, and you know I think that uh, I think that he's going to be surprised that I'm where I'm at at the age that I'm at. Um, I think if you look at the end of my UFC career and what happened a few years ago, I slowed down a lot, you know, and and I just wasn't the same fighter. And I and I, I had 46, 45 professional fights before I ever got TKO'd or you know any of that, and then. It happened because of my neck. You know, I would I would cut weight, and then my neck would be super tight when I'd wake up, and I'd have to go fight. And and I knew it was an issue, you know, but I didn't. I and I probably knew as big of an issue it was, but I still wanted to fight. You know, I'm a Viking, I'm a secret ball holler, right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I think I think that that he'll be surprised. I think he'll be, uh, and I, I think that the first round is going to be exciting, and I, and I think that he's going to come ready to fight, and I'm going to become ready to fight. And, but I don't think he'll make it out of the second round. I think I'll be able to finish him and stop him in the second round. I definitely agree. I, I think it will definitely be an exciting fight. Um, both you guys bring the heat. Both y'all can throw heavy leather. But I, I feel like you're going to be a w little bit too well-rounded for him. Uh, your opponent lost his last fight by a guillotine choke. Mm -hmm. Your opponent <laughs> lost his fight by his last fight by a guillotine choke, which you have ten submissions, and four of them are by the guillotine choke. Do you think you will be able to catch him in one of your submissions, maybe? Yeah, I mean, I, I would think it'd be very smart of him to not put his head down. Because if he puts his head down and and tries to stay down there and take me down, then I'm uh, I'm going to choke him. Um, I think a lot of guys have, have, have stayed away from takedowns and, and really grinding on takedowns, especially once they feel my strength and, and, and power. They don't. They, they. It's not the best decision. So, um, but I think that he he's going to get frustrated standing up with me, and I think that he's going to have no choice but to come into clinch. And um, if he tries to take me down, I think there's a good chance that he ends up being submitted for sure. And is that is that mainly your game plan? Is to look for the submission, or is it mainly just to keep it on your feet? No, I mean at this age, I'm I'm a well-rounded mixed martial artist. I, I train stand up, I train um, I train a lot of like fancy tricks too. You know what I mean? Like, um, and and you know I I I'm grappling a lot more than I have in the last few years. And uh, what I want to show is, you know, early on in my career, I was a wrestler, and I would go in, I would clinch guys, and I would take them down, and then I hurt my neck, and I had to figure out how to really, you know. Um, start to put hands on guys, and I did that in the WFO, WSOF, and you know I stood up with guys in the UFC again. And now it's like it's almost like it's come full circle. I, I, I was the grappler, and then I was the stand-up fighter, and, and now I got the whole game. So no, I'm gonna go in, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna flow with him, and, and kind of see where he's at, and see what kind of fight he wants to fight, and then I'm gonna start to up the pressure on him, and, and take this fight where he doesn't want to go, you know, wherever that might be, whether it ends up being the stand up, the clinch, the ground. I feel very very confident everywhere, but for the first time in ten years, I feel the most confident on the ground, which is gonna be interesting to see how that plays out. I agree. It's definitely exciting. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about this fight, hearing yeah. you talk about this fight. It's getting me pumped. Uh, I'm a huge fan of yours. I'm also pretty good, familiar with William also, so I think this is a great fight. It's going to be a great co-main event for LFA. And is this a one-fight deal with LFA? Yeah, we just we just signed this fight, you know, and, and, and for me, like I said, this is number 48, you know, and, and I, would, I, I would like to get to 50. You know, and, and so, but I'm not trying to say, oh, I want to get back to the UFC or I want to go here. I mean, listen, I, I, I looked at the PFL lineup and I think I could mop, mop up anybody in that welterweight division. So a million bucks, you know, I wouldn't, wouldn't mind chasing that. I've also talked to uh, Rich Chow at, at Bellator, you know, and they're watching the fight. But for me, like I said, I like fighting in my hometown. If, if LFA came back, maybe we'd do another one. You know, maybe I'll be done. Maybe it'll go so good that I'm like, ah, you know, that's it. I'm done. And and maybe, you know, it doesn't and I'm done. 
You know what I mean? So I'm not, what I am is I'm just very present in my life where I'm at. I'm, uh, I'm really excited to go out and perform in front of my friends and family. And then we'll just, like I said, I'm 39 years old. I'm not, I'm not getting any younger, but I feel really, really good. And, um, I, I, if I was to have to bet on this, this would not be my last fight. That's exciting. That's actually going to be one of my other questions was to see, you know, uh, you used to uh, fight for WSOF, which is now the PFL. And, uh, you know, that tournament, I, I would love to see you in that. If you can get, uh, you know, in that tournament, especially fighting for a million dollars, I think you would be a great addition to that tournament. They need some big name welterweights like you. And hopefully you, hopefully you maybe uh, uh, smash William and you can maybe get with the PFL in that tournament because that would be great. I agree. I, you know, I, I wouldn't mind getting in that tournament. I think Ali kind of stacks it the way that he wants to stack it for some of his fighters, you know, and, and Ray Seffa. But, you know, I think I do good in this fight. And like I said, I don't see anybody in that welterweight tournament that I couldn't beat and beat decisively. And how is this weight cut going for you? Uh, you are a little bit older in your career right now. Is it is the weight cut getting a little bit harder for you? No, I mean, you know, I was 190 pounds and I was eating pizza once a week and, you know, but I, I, I'm more than I ever have been in my whole life. You know, I, I don't, I don't party, you know, I take very good care of myself. I eat, I eat now, not just to like, to feel good, but I eat, I eat for like live enzymes so that the life force in my body is strong and so that I can heal and so that I can be strong. As soon as I started trying to like be conscious of the weight, I dropped right under 185 pounds. I told them I didn't want to cut to 170 pounds because I'm just, I think that the big weight cuts are, are going to have long-term effects on fighters. I think that um, guys losing 15, 20 pounds weeks before the fight dehydrate their, their brains and their spinal cords and then you go out and get hit, you know, and I spoke at the Mike Didka Foundation, and I, I got to talk to Herschel Walker and a lot of these ex NFL players and families that have had athletes that have dealt with the, the CTE, you know. And I actually want to be, you know, somebody that says stop cutting, stop the big weight cuts, and take care of yourselves and think about, you know, the long term. And so now, I mean, I'm my weight cuts. I'm already down under 185 pounds. We're only going to 75. I mm -hmm. went to yoga, Bikram yoga last night, which is a 90-minute class. I lost seven pounds in uh, 90 minutes. And previous in my career, if I could lose the 70 pounds in the 90 minutes, I could cut 10 pounds in an hour. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the weight off slowly. And when I do my weight cut, it won't be any more than five pounds. You know, and, and that's and, – and I'm actually kind of surprised, but I think that – you know, I, I don't think the human body is supposed to peak at 20, 25 years old. You know, I think that, the, that we're supposed to, to peak at, at 40, maybe 50. You know, there's a, there's a quote by Socrates that says, it's a shame for a man to grow into his late age and not realize how strong and physically and mentally strong he can truly be. And that's what I'm after, you know, is after, after beating up my body in, in football, in fighting for 30 years, you know, I want people to look at me at 50 years old and be like, I can't believe that dude looks like that and, and, and speaks like that. And that's what I'm after is show to people, you know, that like we can peak at 50. We don't have to peak at 25. Oh, yeah. I mean, you definitely look to be in great sh shape. I've been seeing on your Instagram. I mean, you look shredded still, you know, and also, to, you know, like you were saying, I, I believe the weight cuts. Um, a lot of fighters, I believe, shouldn't be cutting all that weight. I don't, I don't know how you guys can go cut 20 to 15 pounds the week of a fight and still be able to perform at your best ability, especially with taking damage and uh, just reading up on it. You know, people say they get more injuries when they're cutting the weight, but not even when they're actually fighting and stuff. So I, I, I think that's a great stand. Try to, you know, not have all these fighters cut so much weight, uh, kind of like they do, I think, in uh, 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 1FC or um, 1FC, right? Mm -hmm, they what do. is it that they do? Somebody mentioned that to me that they have like the best protocol. What what do they do? Do you know exactly? Uh, I'm not, not exactly, but I know it's kind of like how they do like in the like the like the high school wrestling where you you can only cut a certain per, per, uh, percent of your body fat. Like uh, okay. Demetrius Johnson over there fights at 135, but I think they still call it like fly weights. So I kind of like that. So it's, it's a great idea. And so as you can see, um, so you got your main f fame started from being on the Ultimate Fighter season two. 
uh, which I was a huge fan of. Obviously, I have the whole DVD yeah. set. I, I loved it. It was one of my favorite seasons. Uh, your fight with Melvin Gillard. I, I've always remembered that fight. I remember watching when I was a kid, just watching it on TV, and I was like, man, you both were my picks to win the show. And you went straight after one of the toughest guys on your first fight. You're like, oh, I want this guy. And I'll never forget right. that. And Dana White was like, man, this guy's crazy. He needs a weight to, you know, he shouldn't be fighting him in the first fight. And that was a great fight. And I was just uh, wondering, you know, looking back on that, uh, like, would you ever do the Ultimate Fighter again or anything, anything like that? Yeah, you know, they, they actually, they did the, uh, they did a, the, the comeback show. Mm -hmm. And I was in the UFC when they did that. And they called and asked me if I wanted to do it. Um, you know, but I was making six figures fighting for the UFC and they wanted to give me like 2,500 bucks. You know uh, what I mean? Yeah. I was like, listen, as a dad and I, I, you know, I couldn't do that, but if the opportunity came back up again, you know, with, I would, I would absolutely do it. It was, it was a very cool experience to be able to go into a house and isolate yourself from the world and be able to just focus on martial arts and train. I would do it. And it was such a good experience for me that, that I wouldn't shy away from it again you know i mean I, as long as they let me have the phone once or twice a week to say hi to my kids and it was only a, a four five six week thing then then I, I would do it again i wouldn't be against it you know i'm like i said man i'm i don't know that i'll ever really retire from the game you know like i said vikings man right we seek Valhalla, and then and, and, and i just i don't know that I, I love martial arts more now than i did when i started i have a I, I wasn't going to train fighters and this week and I had a kid come up to me his name's Wolf and he was one of my students and he asked me if I would help him get ready for his first professional fight and I told him I said no nah, I don't deal with fighters man I just I just I teach my students and if you want to come to class then you know then then I will teach you martial arts but I teach people martial arts not to be fighters and uh he kept coming to class kept coming to class and a couple weeks out I said hey I'll help you and then so I started helping him get ready and really he had a four he has a four year old son named Jackson and his son's the one that I was like, I need to help this dude's dad. <sighs> and the fighter went in and he fought a kid that was five and two. Everybody thought this kid was gonna get, you know, beat up. And he went out and he and he and he TKO'd this dude uh -huh. in in the first round and it really it was really cool to be a part of his experience, you know, and and I just, like I said, I, I love martial arts. This is my life. There's no backup plan. You know, I want to teach martial arts and share martial arts, and I'm going to do it forever, you know. And, and, and like I said, if, who knows? Like I said, I might, I might fight at 42. I might fight at 45. And it's not about trying to be the best anymore. It's just about living the lifestyle, you know, and, and being a good example to my kids and, and the people around me. So kind of on that Randy Couture style, you know, where you just find real late and don't mind, still, still scrapping it out. Yeah. Looking back on your epic UFC career, what was your most favorite moment inside the octagon? Is it maybe your win over KJ Nunes, Josh Neer, Drew Fickett, or maybe your wars with Carl Parisian, Mike Swick, or Paul Felder? Yeah, man. Uh, you know, I mean, really it's got to be like um, the earliest one, uh, Sam Morgan. You know, because there was just so much on the line. I was a 25-year-old kid, you know, that, and I had, I had uh, broke my arm against Melvin. I knew that I could have won that Ultimate Fighter TV show. And, you know, Dana was like, listen, we're going to give you another shot against Sam Morgan. If you win, you're going to get, to, you know, a nine-fight contract. And, you know, Sam was tough, and I went out there, and I beat him in 21 seconds in, in, a, in a dynamic fashion. And that was like me arriving on the scene, and, you know, that's kind of set the page for, you know, the next, you know, 10 years. And it, that was the, that was the biggest, coolest moment of my of my career, you know, next to, you know, getting revenge on John Fitch, which was outside the UFC, you know, but it, it was still one of the like, probably the coolest moment of my career next to the Sam Morgan victory. And the Sam Morgan fight, I, I believe you won that fight by KO by slam. Yeah, yeah, it, it was a slam. And, and, you know, I was just so like just into the moment, you know, that I hit him with a few elbows after that probably didn't need to happen. But I wanted to make sure he didn't get up and I got my contract. And you were in the UFC in two different times, like two different eras of the UFC. Could you notice the difference? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the UFC was a lot different when I went back, you know. And when I, when I first got in, there were a hundred of us. And we had just arrived in Vegas and, 
we went where we wanted to do what we wanted and they let us in the clubs and it was <laughs> i mean it was it was an epic time in the ufc early on and then when i got back it was still very cool but it was different it was more corporate you know like and luckily for me dana white was a friend of mine we were buddies like I, you know and everyone's always, always like man why is dana treat you like that why are you and dana like that you know and i was just like you know we started early on and it, it was cool because i had different relationships with with them you know and not that the fighters now don't but it was just a different time you know that's awesome. Yeah, it's a great insight. I, I wouldn't uh, think of that, but that's, that's awesome to hear. You know, it makes sense too. And then, um, you know, talking about the Ultimate Fighter uh, season two, do you still talk to any of those former uh, contestants on the show with you? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, for I stayed in touch with Melvin for a long time. I still, uh, you know, touch base with uh, Matt Hughes and, and um, Joe Stevenson. And when I run into guys, you know, we we, we still, we still, you know, chat and, and, and all that. And everybody kind of follows each other. I'm still buddies with, you know, I, I, I didn't have a lot of enemies in the fight game. I made a lot of friends and, and, and I, I always kind of maintain those relationships and, and stay buddies with guys, you know, and have for a long time. And do you still, do you watch the show by any chance anymore when they have the new seasons? Do you, do you keep up with the new seasons of Ultimate Fighter or no, not too much? You know, I don't anymore, but I do, you know, I, I like, uh, I catch I, every once in a while. I'll catch episodes, and people will talk about them. When they did the, you know, there's a couple seasons where they brought the girls on, and I got into that because I was like, I don't know if I like this or not, you know. And I ended up, you know, really respecting, you know, the the, the women's MMA, and so, you know, I haven't, but I haven't, no, I haven't followed it, you know, as much. I mean, all the way back from when when, when I was on it. I don't watch a lot of TV, you know what I mean, and so, you know, that's probably the main reason that I don't that I don't watch it or. I would. And do you have any other hobbies outside of uh, training and fighting? Yeah, I do a little bit of everything, you know. But, I mean, now a lot of it is just, you know, being a father and, and, and you know, learn, teaching my kids theirs. And I just – I love being a dad. And then I do this Budokan stuff, which is, you know, uh, uh, it's a mixture of yoga and, and martial arts and mobility and, you know, anything that gets me moving. I snowboard, I, I, I ski, I, I skate, I longboard with my kids. You know what I mean? I got, I got a mountain bike, I got a road bike. You know, I just, all those things to keep me moving and keep me active, you know. And, and that's kind of like, that's what I do. I go camping, you know, I got a camper, we got four wheelers, all that kind of stuff, you know. So you're now, you like to be outdoors, basically. Oh, I love to be outdoors, especially when the sun starts coming back and it gets nice outside. You know, I think, yeah, it's, I think it's good to be outside, good to be moving and, and just keep ourselves active. You know, I mean, as much as, you know, the technology wants to pull us in and keep us on our phones and our computers, you know, my rebellion is the movement and, and, and being outside in nature and stuff like that, too, for sure. That's awesome. Yeah, especially I believe you're, you're out there in Colorado or uh, Utah. Utah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, that's a good area to be outside and, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Last night I went up the mountain, the runoffs come and I jumped in the river, you know what I mean? It was, it was awesome, you know? So, um, but, but really, you know, my passion is martial arts and, and, and people, you know, and, and I try to blend those two things together as much as I can. And do you have any, uh, special, uh, shout outs to any sponsors or training partners? Uh, no, you know, I mean, I, I just, you know, to my fans and my, my family and my friends, you know, I've had a great career. And like I said, my martial arts career doesn't end. You know what I mean? It just it continues to go and, and, and move forward. And I have so many people that have helped me. You know, I have good relationships with Dana White, the UFC. And uh, it's just been a blessed career. And I thank everybody for following me, including you, including everybody that, that gives me love and, and, you know, promotes my fights and just helps me be able to, you know, uh, do what I love, you know, thank you very much because I'm very grateful that I'm still at this and still being able to do it. And do you have any last words for your opponent, William? No, I mean, just, you know, I'm nothing crazy. Just, I know he's, I know he's a, uh, he, he's coming ready to fight. He wants to make it back and let's put on a show. That's what I'm doing. You know, I'm, I'm not worried about winning and losing. I worry about training every day and doing what I love. And I know that I'm going to get in there and, 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 fight and then at the end of the day i don't i don't like to get in brawls and i don't want to get in a battle i'm an artist and i want to go out and i want to make this look good but you know i know he's coming to fight and so am i that's a great mindset to have and everyone needs to make sure to tune in to lfa 66 may 10th 
where we'll see two UFC vets battling it out in the co-main event. And thank you again, Josh, for giving me some of your time today. And I cannot wait to see your fight. And I totally can look forward to seeing you put on another epic win. And it's going to be a great fight. And it's going to be live on Access TV. Yeah, thank you very much. And like I said, man, my, my, my thought to everybody, don't give up on the body and, you know, tune in because at 30, my, 39 years old, I think I'm going to have one of the best performances I've had. So check it out. And thanks for having me. If y'all enjoyed that video, please hit the like and subscribe button below. Stay tuned for our next one.